Thank you. That's the first time I've ever seen the AV guy attack the thing with a knife. We're in Scotland, after all. Well, th uh, thank you very much. Um, so I'm talking a little bit about the work we're doing on security module stacking. Uh, I decided that a, a good title is worth a thousand words, and so I yeah, came up with this one. Uh, it's a new clicker. I haven't, there we go. I said, there we go. Come on, come to Papa. There we go. Okay, so there I am in case you haven't seen the slide before. Uh, so security Linux security modules. Why do we have Linux security modules? Uh, because Linux wanted to make, didn't want to be involved in the discussions about what security, security policies we should have in the kernel anymore. And so he di dictated that there be a, a framework that you could plug your security module in and then he didn't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, what is a security module stack? Uh, you might ask, well, and the answer is it's a collection of security modules. Uh, they're called in, called in order, and the first one that fails, um, you stop. So it's a bail on fail model. Uh, we have minor security modules. These are little teeny security modules that uh, do little interesting things, but most importantly, um, it's based on available state. They don't maintain any state of their own. They just use information that's already available with a slight asterisk on that. Uh, major security modules, on the other hand, um, manage state, um, manage information about um, objects, subjects, uh, other, other aspects of the system. But they, maintain, they keep track of that themselves. They maintain it. We have mechanisms for um, allowing the security modules to hang, hang their information off of system, th system data structures, like inodes, tasks, et cetera. Uh, and since the, the module is, is maintaining those, um, that makes them, we call that a major one. Uh, they also might use uh, networking facilities like NetLabel and SecMarks in order to uh, propagate information about the networking. So as of today, uh, what the security module stacking looks like is you have a set of minor modules, uh, capability being the first one, uh, then Yama and load pin, and then you get to choose one of the major modules. Um, so why can't we just stack it all together? Well, we've got a stumbling block. That is blob pointers. Um, because the various modules want to use security blobs, and we've only got one pointer on each of these data structures to point to security blobs, you can't share them. Uh, if you have SC Linux and Smack running at the same time, for example, uh, they will each want to use the, the pointer in the inode structure uh, and the cred structure and a bunch of other structures um, to maintain their data. And if you ran them both at the same time, what you would find is that SE Linux would put its information into the structure, and then Smack would come along and put its information into the structure. And then when you went to do the check, the SE Linux would say, hey, I'm going to go look at this information, and it's the, it's the Smack information, and bad things would happen. So the solution to this is to have the uh, security module infrastructure manage the blobs instead of the individual modules. This is actually reasonably straightforward to do. Um, you have the security modules, uh, when they get initialized, tell the infrastructure how much space they need, and the infrastructure will then tell the module, when you use this information, use it at this offset, uh, which if there's only one module running, will always be zero, but if you've got multiple modules, it will point, up, point off to uh, an appropriate offset in the blob that the infrastructure is managing. And then you can go ahead and uh, share those blobs. When I wrote up the slides, this seemed like it was still kind of pie in the sky, something we'll do someday. But it's starting to look like uh, we've kind of crested the hill on this and we may have it in the next release or two. So that will be really good. But that's still not gonna solve all our problems. Um, B 
when we when we actually have this, you know, we'll be able to, to pull App Armor out, or sorry, Tomoyo, out of the, the list of major modules and put it there so that you can put that on the stack. But it's not going to solve all the problems. Uh, we still have more stumbling blocks. Uh, first one is sec IDs. Anybody know what a sec ID is? Okay, good. Anybody care what a sec ID? Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you, James. Uh, well, a sec ID is a 32-bit quantity that identifies the security information associated with, with an object or a packet or some other set of information. Um, but each of the security modules that uses sec IDs wants the whole thing. Um, unfortunately, you can't, if you have two modules that use sec IDs, that's 64 bits of information. And we still haven't figured out how to get 64 bits into a 32-bit integer. Uh, and to make things a little bit more, di more difficult, one of the places where we use sec IDs is in a sec mark, which is in the IP packet, sorry, in the IP packet handling code. Um, and we have been told <clears throat> without, without unequivocally that no way are we going to get any more information, in there, any more space in there. We get 32 bits, and that's it. Well, gosh, what are we going to do there? Um, we've got 32 bits. We have more than 32 bits of information we need to have. How are we going to deal with this? Um, and this is one of the more major uh, pieces of uh, construction needs to be done on this. And that is we have to replace that 32 bits with a, a structure that has information from all of the security modules that are using SEC IDs in order to, uh, to propagate that. Now, you know, with stacking, you, we have a, a structure here that's got, you know, in this example, we've got, got the three, three uh, instances for SE Linux, SMAC, and AppArmor. And if we don't have stacking, well, we just make it a union instead, and so you still only got one. So you know, we're not adding a lot of expense there, uh, especially in the non-stacking case. Um, but then we have to decide, have to have a mechanism for de defining which one of these sec IDs to use in any particular case. Well, within the security modules, that's easy. We just use the uh, use the field that's associated with that that module, and we're done. Um, if we're in NetFilter, um, NetFilter currently has a single entry in it which says, if you're using SE Linux, here's where the, here's where the information is. Uh, we need to break that out and say, well, if you're using SMAC, here's where the information is. Now, it turns out that in both cases, that again, if you're not stacking, it'll be the same 32 bits. Um, and if you are, you'll have to tell it which one it, which one it is. Uh, currently, SMAC is uh, a bad citizen in this particular case in that it uses the SE Linux mode um, in SecMark, but that's something that needs to get fixed when it's broken. Uh, now, if you're in it, <clears throat> so if you, if you want to do something like um, SO PureSec or any of the other uh, mechanisms that are available for getting information about um, the security label of, a, of an entity, um, you have to have a mechanism for determining which one of these you're going to get. By default, you're going to get the first one in, in the uh, security module list, which um, today is SC Linux. But if you want to explicitly say which one you want, you have to add a PR control to say, when I call SO PureSec, give me the one for you know, SC Linux in this example. Now, we could have done it a number of other ways. Uh, one way that, that <clears throat> had been suggested was to, when you call SO PureSec, you would get a list based, an in order list of the attributes uh, for all the security modules you have. Uh, that would probably have broken user space in hideous and uh, uncomfortable ways. So we decided not to do that. So if we go ahead and do this, um, and make sec IDs generally useful. Um, let's see here. Let's read. Filter. Ah. Okay. Well, then uh, it turns out we can we can 
on, with the current implementation at least, pull App Armor out as well. So now you've got um, your choice of Smack RSC Linux and then App Armor and Tomoyo and everybody's happy here, but we're still not done. So what's our next stumbling block? Next stumbling block are mount options. What is about mount options? Well, today, um, if you have an unrecognized option in your, in your mount, your mount system call, it fails. Um, now, in this particular case here, uh, we've said, we've specified a mount option that SC Linux recognizes and a mount option that SMAC recognizes. Uh, with the old code, if you go into SC Linux, it's going to say, oh, I don't recognize SMAC FS root, so it's an error. Um, so what we have to change it is so that the security modules don't make judgment on options that they don't recognize. Uh, unfortunately, what this means is that um, if none of the security modules recognize it, it's still unrecognized, this, no one is going to detect that it's completely unrecognized and will we'll succeed in a case where it might have otherwise failed. Uh, not insurmountable, but a nuisance and probably not worth dealing with unless, so long as uh, David Howells is still working on completely redoing the mount, you know, the world of mount from the ground up, which we're very, very much hoping for real soon now. But he talked about that earlier. All right, so is that our only stumbling block? No, unfortunately it isn't. Uh, the next one is net label. Now the net label subsystem is a really cool bit of code. Um, it allows you to put uh, Cipso and Calypso options onto packets so you can get the uh, security information about your process across the network, across so the uh, socket interface to, to other processes that on this machine or on other ones. Well, unfortunately, um, we, okay, you get one Cipso tag, period, and that's the, the way the spec works. Um, and if your security, op security modules don't agree on what that labeling should be, you have a problem. What do you do? Uh, you could consider adding them together, but that would be wrong. You could consider doing an, ex you know, doing an or and only including the bits that they both agree on, but that would still be wrong. Um, so the only th thing that really makes sense there is to have, is to deny it unless the security modules agree. Um, that's probably not going to give you a whole lot of cases where you actually get anything to work because uh, the security modules are likely to use the, use the labels in different ways and they're almost, they're going to have different granularities as well. Um, another issue here w with the net label code is that whereas all whereas the other security in interfaces are pull interfaces. That is, um, the attributes in the security module, you, you pull the attributes from the, the code you're, you're running in. Um, with NetLabel, the security module pushes its information into the NetLabel system and says, here, I want you to use this information. And then, those attributes are converted to actual CIPSO header information and put into the socket, uh, which means that it, you can't do any kind of abstract comparison. You can only compare directly against what would actually be on the wire. So that makes things a little bit more difficult. And there are cases where um, if you're using network selectors and deciding that, or network address selectors, that you're not going to use what's in the socket after all anyway. So it gets a little bit hairy to determine this. Um, and, but once you've actually come, you know, we're looking at a couple of options on how to do that. And in particular, the, uh, well, the n next slide here, net label config the configuration. Um, the security modules aren't always going to use the same defaults with regard to what they want, the, how they want the system to behave. For example, most SC Linux sockets 
most, well, most networks on an SC-Linux system are unlabeled. Uh, this is in part because SC-Linux only uses the, the CIPSO label for the MLS component. SMAC, on the other hand, dumps the entire uh, SMAC label into the, the CIPSO header in a somewhat um, clever way. Um, and does that by default for all, all networks. So they're, they're very much at odds with the way they use it. And address selectors, where you're allowed to say that this host should be given this label and information coming from this host should be given this label, um, is deferred until delivery. So if you're using those, you're not actually going to make the decision at the same point. You're not going to make the decisions at socket cre creation. You're going to make the decisions at, at packet delivery. So there's a bit of a um, complication there, complexity. Also granularity, like I said, uh, the, security modules, the, the security modules aren't going to use the same granularity if they were, then you'd probably only need one. So the SMAC label of a process is going to change at a different rate than the, SMAC, than the SC Linux label of a process is going to change, or the SC Linux context is going to change. Um, and again, that's going to make, make things difficult. And just to add another, another loop, uh, SMAC allows you to change the label that's used on a socket after you've created it, whereas SC Linux always does it at socket creation. Um, but once we get all these issues addressed, uh, that gives us a situation where if we can actually come get it to the point where we get that, that done correctly, um, then we can stack all the security modules and everybody can be happy. And what could possibly still cause any problems more than that, right? Um, well, one of the problems is you might have is if you, you stack your modules, you could have redundant purpose. There really isn't any point in having SMAC and SC Linux at the same time. If you want a, a full up mandatory access control policy, pick one. Uh, sorry, now AppArmor, AppArmor does things differently. Okay? AppArmor's policy, although it's a mandatory access control policy, it's not a straight subject object access kind of thing. So you might want to use that in conjunction with another, with uh, one of the others. Uh, networking. There are things you can do to confuse how you're using the system. Um, if you want to want things to be sane, don't uh, don't mix the network using policy network policy using modules because getting them to agree is going to be really tough. There are issues with user space. Um, user space may get confused over which security module you're using if you're using multiples. Uh, the ID command is my personal favorite. Say ID, it will, if you use ID dash Z, which is supposed to tell you the security context, um, it'll tell you, oh, uh, you don't have SE Linux and, yeah, yeah, you don't have SE Linux in, uh, installed, I won't give it to you. If you do have SE Linux, it will always give you SE Linux, but what about the other yeah, information? You probably want to get, get, you might want to get more information um, out of ID. Uh, LS-Z dash as well. I was like, well, I want to see all the security information about that. Eh. Uh, good news is Systemd seems to be do doing a pretty good job of keeping up with the security modules, and I think it actually, well, yeah, my experience is that it actually will support things out of the box, but again, there are cases you can confuse it. Um, the good news is if you, we have a, a file in, in uh, syskernel security called LSM, which will give you a list of the, the modules that are in, actually installed, so you can actually do something. So, I just hit the wrong button. There we go. Oh. All right, so. If you're writing a new Linux security module and you're looking for, for the potential of stacking it uh, in the near future, what do you need to know? Well, first thing is, uh, if you're using networking, make it optional. If, you want to plug, if you're gonna wanna plug it in with one of the other modules that uses, secure, uses networking, 
you might not want to be the one who owns the networking. You might want to let the other guy have the networking um, in practical configurations. Read the net level code before you use it. I didn't, and I have a lot of rework to do. Um, and you define what what it mean what a what what it would mean for sa for sane behavior to be if your network doesn't have labels on it. Just those are important things. Uh, process attributes. Traditionally, you can look in proc in proc adder to find proc adder current to uh, find what your current process context is. Uh, we're adding a subdirectory in uh, proc adder for your particular LSM. Uh, makes things a whole lot easier. You, you, never, you know you're never going to be any conflicting there. Um, SO PureSec, you might want to have a wrapper for that to make sure that you're getting your information, not somebody else's. Think twice about using sec IDs. Do you really want to have that? Do you really need to have the things that, that you get with sec IDs like audit, like um, audit filtering? Um, you probably do, but if you don't, if you can avoid that, you're probably going to make your life simpler. Uh, and be careful with the estate, okay? Remember that in a stacking environment, if the guy ahead of you fails, you're not going to get called. So if you're counting on, on balancing your state uh, throughout all, all the hooks that you're calling, and, you're, and something else fails ahead of you, you won't get called. So you just need to be really, really careful with that. If you're going to have a uh, state that you're you know, memory you're allocating um, to keep track of things outside of what's in the, uh, in the infrastructure managed blobs, on process exit, you're going to need to clean that up um, because, well, you're going to have to do that. So it's wrapping up here. All right, so stacks of dissimilar modules are good. Uh, it's like we like to be able to do all kinds of interesting, interesting and unnatural things um, in, in unison because, well, the more unnatural things you do, the better, right? Um, stacks should avoid fighting over the network because the network configuration always has been and always will be uh, a sophisticated exercise. And if you color within the lines, yeah, play by the rules, don't try to do things that are esoteric or um, require, a dish, re <clears throat> require uh, extremes of memory management, you're probably going to be happier. Uh, and that's what I have. So, questions? Questions? Um, so, how do I debug when I get a denial? Is it like, I just have to check all three? Is there any sort of unified, have you thought about like unifying that at all, or? How, okay, so, so. You get an e, you get an e access. You do an open, you get an e access. Well, what do you do now? I, um, I, I hate to to say things like this, but probably a third of the programmers out there don't understand mode bits. Um, so people get an error, they throw up their hands, they, they, they do a screenshot, they send it out to a mailing list. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just like. <laughs> uh, the answer is that if you're using a sophisticated stacked security module environment, you're probably not much worse off than you are with a single security module if you're using more than one. Um, if you're not, a, if you're a programmer who's not aware of your environment, you're no worse off than you are now. If you're a programmer who is aware of your environment, you should be aware of the fact that, it, that there might be several things that could cause this. We actually had something very similar to this that we tried to answer several years ago, just with SE Linux and the traditional DAC 
mechanisms. So it's the same sort of problem. Obviously, it gets worse with stacking, but same idea. You can have multiple places where you can get an access control denial. And we called it the friendly EPIRM effort. And we spent a lot of time looking at it. The problem is coming up with any mechanism is just going to be inherently very racy. Um, you know, there, we never could find a good solution. So, I mean, somebody's got an idea and they can demonstrate that it wouldn't be racy as all hell, you know, I think we'd love to hear it, because it, it would be something that would be useful today, independent of stacking. Um, but I think basically from the way we approach it now between at least in the SC Linux land, between DAC and SC Linux, um, is largely with auditing. Um, you know, you'll get the denials, the SC Linux denials to the audit log. And so presumably if you have a well-developed LSM, you're going to have some auditing mechanism um, when you have a denial. So uh, presumably in a stacked environment, each of the LSMs would generate um, denials when they hit it. So now there would be all sorts of interesting questions that would come about because, you know, you might, all the hooks might not be triggered. And, and in reality, you have that today. Um, because if DAC denies um, the access, the LSM never sees it. So um, basically, it's, it's sort of if you don't see a denial in the audit log, then you would assume that the denial happened somewhere else. Uh, do you, what, what is actually shows up in proc self adder like current for this? Okay, so proc self adder current is going to get the first security module that supports credentials, credential hooks in the list. Okay, unless you've used the PR control to tell it which one to, which one to provide. Uh, this is why we want to have the subdirectories because to disambiguate that. Um, I actually, you know, when I did smack way back in the dark ages when dinosaurs roamed the earth, uh, I made a serious mistake by reusing proc adder current rather than having proc adder smack. Um, it was a mistake. I made it. I admit to it. I, I misled the app armor people to do the same thing. Yeah, but I got it into the kernel first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it made sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I guess that's one of the important things here is that things have changed since we did the original, since we did App Armor and SE Linux and Smack. Um, security models are way different. It's like we didn't have Node.js, we didn't have containers. Uh, virtualization was something that you used if you were one of the cool kids, but but in general, people didn't do it. So it's a different environment here. Uh, the biggest reason to do stacking is to encourage and get new models in and new security paradigms uh, moving forward to eventually replace the uh, Bell and Lepodula derivatives that we're using now. Any more questions? Okay. This is maybe a really dumb question and insane, oh, but good. I don't, uh, I, I really haven't thought about it too much. It's like, is the idea that the stack, in the stack, each security module, each LSM needs to be unique? You can't build a stack like, for example, say App Arma, then on top of it, SA Linux, and then another App Arma, and then another SA Linux. That wouldn't fit the current design, but if you called it something other than App Armor, you could do it. <laughs> um, at, now, the, the possibility of, of app armor namespacing, for example, um, is still one where we're, <coughs> as, as a community, we're kind of still gnawing on that one because how do you maintain the security blob for two instances of app armor? Sure, yeah. Uh, how do you maintain yeah, coherency where you've got one policy for the base system and a different policy for the things within the container. Do you do both? Do you do one? Do you do the intersect? Yeah. Yeah, the mind boggles at the possibilities. Uh, but it is conceivably possible. Interesting. Thanks.
So what's the question? Uh oh, here comes the hard one. Uh, more of a comment. Uh, there's an, if the Mount API stuff goes in, there'll be a new system called FSinfo, which allows us to get more information out along the lines of StatFS from files and file systems. We should make, look at making that able to return all the labels attached to a file or a superblock and list the LSMs that those labels belong to. Okay, works for me. Any more questions? Thank you. Uh, one question. The stacking, is it handled by the kernel at the kernel level or at the user level? Sorry? The, the stacking of the modules, is it handled at the kernel level or the user level? Kernel, oh, cur yeah, kernel level. So in, in this case, have it you would thought? It be, be at the kernel level, yes. Yeah, so w when you boot the system, it registers the security modules it's going to use. Now, and, and that's for the entire system. Now, could you do it at, at like a uh, hierarchical level, level where at some point you could say, oh, and from here on down, I want to use this security module as well. Uh, it's conceivable, it's possible. Uh, it has, adds implications. Like the infrastructure has to know that the blob size might change. In this case, would you be able, for instance, to create a new security module that will in fact call the other security modules? Yes. You, well, you can do anything in a security module. They're magical that way. Um, but uh, one of the possibilities for supporting the, uh, the namespacing is you have a security module that actually does dynamic loading of security modules. Uh, I don't know that that's the best way to go about it. Um, that was actually one of the, the original design possibilities for the uh, module stacking, was to have a security module that does nothing but stack security modules. Um, but that had uh, other, it, it, it's, a, it's a sophisticated system to do that. More questions? If not, let's thank Casey yeah, for the talk.